and welcome back wanted to shoot a follow-up video of how the battery bank is performing thus far and what you're looking at here is one of the four spares that uh, we ordered with the original uh, set of 32 um, what I'm going to attempt to splice in to the end of this video is going to be a series of uh, I think three or four clips and it's going to show an issue that we discovered that with the new battery bank under high loads uh, 60 70 plus amps when there's a little when there's a cloud cover or very little sun and it's pulling the majority of what the inverter needs from the batteries uh, you'll see an example in there of cell id 7 uh, which it fell a pretty good amount below the other cells in the bank uh, and you'll see that in the chart there is a, a fair bit of difference. Uh, now, upon further investigation, uh, what we discovered, and if you remember, the current battery bank setup is, just using the cell here as an example, is that you've got your, uh, your grub screw or your set screw or your threaded rod, however you want to look at it, but these little Allen set screws they send with it, it's on here. And then in our setup, what we have from there is, you know, one of these serrated flange nuts that then goes on the top of that. And this, this set screw you see here, or, or grub screw, is a little bit taller than what you get with the batteries. These were uh, some slightly longer ones that we ordered that I was going to use on the battery bank, but then... You know, after receiving the batteries in, the, the studs that came with it were, were long enough. Uh, but just in case you're wondering why that was, you know, longer than uh, kind of what it looks like on the battery bank. But uh, let's get off of that tangent and kind of go back to here. But remember, our battery bank is we've got our bus bar here. We've got our serrated flange screw. And then we take the eyelet from our long mon because we use a Batrium BMS. And then we took a second of those serrated flange nuts and put it down on top. Now for the majority of the battery bank that's working okay. Now as others have done their videos on and found out and especially Andy on the off-grade garage down in Australia and uh, he was kind of running into the same issue where you could watch the individual cell voltages and see a couple were falling out of spec. And if you simply just tighten things up a little bit further, you know, you would see a, a decent millivolt change in the battery and you would see the corresponding behavior change with the BMS. Well, what we're seeing is when the pack was getting under heavy loads, 60 and 70 amps coming out of the, uh, out of the battery bank, that some of the cells per the battery monitor, and you'll see again in those clips, uh, mainly I, ID7, is significantly lower. Now, however, when we took what the battery manager, battery management system, the Batrium was saying, what that long mon for cell 7 was reporting, and actually probed the cell itself, the cell itself was fine. But what was being reported via the battery monitor, monitor was significantly different. So what we did to solve the problem is we took it all back down to basically just the, the stud and the bus bar, in this case. Now our bus bar still sets flat against our terminal, but instead of just going with a straight serrated flange nut like you, again you've seen before, we went out and got a couple of boxes of these. And these are uh, what we consider, what we least call here in the States, lock washers, but they're not the split type lock washers. They're the star tooth type lock washers. And what we found out that this is allowing it to do is that those teeth do a really nice job of being able to bite into that bus bar as well as that serrated flange nut. So again, we've got our stud here. We've got our bus bar installed. We drop our tooth washer onto that. And then we drop our serrated flange nut onto that and tighten it up accordingly. Now, it's going to feel a bit weird if you do the same thing because you've got these ridges, ridges on this serrated flange nut that kind of 
jump over the little grooves and the teeth as you tighten that bolt up so you'll feel it kind of bump around and, and click in place and we just again I just kept tightening on it until it was down to you know specifications and then we put our eyelet in for our long mon and then finally our second uh, serrated flange nut on top now after doing that that solved the problem as you will see in the second clip of which again we put the bank under a 60 to 70 amp load and you'll see that ID7 its reporting voltages is now in line with the majority of the pack now the last clip that you will see is we spent more time while the pack was under load grabbed the IDs of every cell that was behaving the same in other words reporting you know significantly um, lower voltage per cell than the remaining of the pack and did the same treatment so we ended up doing this same treatment on about seven, about eight cells total out of 32 in which again we undid our hardware dropped in one of these tooth washers or tooth lock washers put the nut in tightened it put the connector in for the long mon and put the second flange nut on top after doing that, what you'll see in the final clip is again, we're putting the bank under a 61, 62 amp load, I believe it was. But you'll notice if you look at the battery voltages all the way across all 32 cells, they are much even. And even under a 61 to 62 amp load, there is only about a 2 millivolt difference between the highest reporting cell and the lowest reporting cell versus the previous videos in which that disparity was a was a lot more so it kind of goes to show you that earlier when we spoke about why we were using one long mon per cell and yes it's a little bit more expensive it's a little bit more tedious of a setup but in this case it gave us the ability to look at each individual cell's health and determine that there was a problem with a couple of the cells as far as their connection versus the remaining cells. Uh, so if I would have gone with a setup where maybe I had two of these cells in parallel, uh, what could have happened was one of the cells in parallel could have had a connection issue and if the other cell that that monitor was attached to, uh, if those connections were more secure, I could have had a connection issue with one of the two cells and never seen it versus Again, it's a bit more tedious to do it, but having a monitor per cell just kind of gave, gave us the granularity to see that we had a couple of misbehaving cells in relation to the pack in full. So I just, just wanted to put this video out there to show you that, um, you know, monitoring, at least for us, we constantly monitor via the management software the, the status of that battery bank. Uh, again, just looking for anomalies, especially since the bank is new and it's only been cycle, only been in service now, I believe, for, for a couple of weeks at this point. But again, you'll see in that final video where things look much, much, much better across the board. And we'll kind of keep an eye on it from there and adjust from there. Now, the pack of uh, tooth washers or external tooth uh, or tooth lock washers, however you want to call them. We got these off eBay, and I'll put a link in the description of what we're using. And this is just a 300-piece kit. comes with a variety of sizes. Well, other than that, that's it. And um, hopefully you find this helpful, and uh, we'll bring you back as things progress.